So the first thing I'm looking for when I'm coming out spring fishing on Lake Ontario or the St. Lawrence River is I'm going to be looking for some sort of a flat. All right, the fish are they're, they're coming in shallow. They're looking for a place to spawn. So I'm looking for a flat that's going to have water anywhere from eight foot to about three foot. So I, I got a little play there. Um, and I'm also going to be looking for the warmest water in that area. As, as you go to different, even different sides of the lakes or different sides of a bay, you're going to find that there, there can be a big temperature change. So you're looking for the warmest water. The easiest way to find that is to look at the prevailing wind. Uh, so here it is a south southwest wind. You're going to want to find a flat or a bay that ha that's that south southwest wind is blowing right into. The next thing I'm thinking about is baits. So in the spring here on Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence River, in the spring you're looking at bait fish, minnows, shad, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so that's, uh, sinkos just aren't going to work. Anything wormy is not going to work this time of year. So you, you narrow, and crabs are not a factor here either. So it's, it's, it's shad, it's minnow looking things. You're looking at jerk baits and swim baits. So what I'm going to start out with is a jerk bait. Got a nice little lip on this so I can get, see that's going to bring me through that eight foot water column right through the middle of it. And if I, if I slow her down, I can, I can run this through four feet of water. Um, it does work. And it looks like gobies, which is, which is a big, a big uh, bait fish that we have up here. So I'm going to start out with that. And it's great for covering water. I can make a really long cast with it. I'm going to cause a commotion and the water is going to draw attention just to let me know if there's fish in the area. Um, from there, I'm going to go with a quarter ounce swim. I'm going to, because I'm in, I'm going to, I'm going to start at that eight foot mark. I'm going to start deep and I'm going to drift across that area of the flat. Then I'm going to move in, right, and hopefully get into the six to four foot and I'm going to go from four foot to three foot. So in that deeper water, I'm going to use a quarter ounce jig, right? And I'm going with a shad colored kind of thing with a, with a decent size paddle tail, right? And this is uh, about three and a half inches. That's about the average where you want to start anywhere from three to four inches. You don't want to go super big. Um, if I don't get anything on that, I'm going to scale her down. Now I got an eighth ounce jig, right? And I got, again, look at that. That's a, that's a very, very minnow looking bait. And that's only a three incher, okay? Um, I'm going to go down to that if I don't get any bites. And then last but not least, I got this little bugger. And that actually is for perch and crappie, but it's a tiny little jig with a, <laughs> and I can't explain that one. That's kind of my secret weapon. Um, this time of year, giant smallmouth bite that thing. I don't know why, but I've got that for that really shallow, you know, for that, that's perfect for that three feet of water. Another key player in this the whole game here are, is a good pair of polarized glasses. This water is crystal clear, man. So even, even as my, my swim bait, or my, uh, my jerk bait, as I'm, here we go, as I'm pulling it in, I'm looking for dark spots behind my bait. If I got fowlers, again, I'm just trying to find out, are there fish in the area? And it looks like there is. You know, another thing that I'm doing is that I'm allowing the wind and the current to do my drift. What, what's, what I'm doing when I do that is I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm blending in with my surroundings. Sometimes when we're on that trolling motor, we're, we're moving a little faster than the elements are, you know, or a little slower. So I'm allowing the wind, I'm, I'm getting in sync with my surroundings. It seems to make a difference. The other thing that happens is um, it helps me with my casting. I cast with the wind and that way I can really get away from the boat, which is very important this time of year.
Look at that guy. Nice, big, fatty. Look at the colors on him, man. Beautiful, right? St. Lawrence River, Lake Ontario, that's a five pounder. All right, I found out from my jerk bait that there's fish in the area. Now I'm gonna try the swim, all right? I'm only gonna try this for a bit. I'm gonna give her 10, 20 casts. If I got nothing, I'm going back to the jerk. You know, sometimes the, the only bait that works is that jerk bait, but a lot of times, if your jerk bait is working, a swim bait's gonna work. So let's give this one a shot. And this is where being with that wind, especially, especially when I get to that eighth ounce jig, um, with my casting as, as I'm casting with the wind I'm going to get 10 feet 20 20 more feet or 20 yards 20 more yards out of my cast it's just it's so crucial to get as far away from the boat as you can all right quarter ounce is not working I'm gonna jump to the eight First cast of the eight. Let's see what happens. You know, and then she drops right on the Here we go. Nice. Nice. That's, this, this is the, uh, the eighth ounce. Looks like we got another four and a half pounder here. Uh, yep. Corner of the lip, which is nice. Yeah. Probably just a four, four two maybe. Right, that was on the the eighth ounce. So I'm gonna th continue to throw that. See if we catch another one. Uh, that was just one fish, and I, I've made made quite a few casts. So I'm not convinced. The only thing, the only pattern I'm finding so far is that it's deeper water. But I'm not positive on that one. So I've been throwing it again and again to see if we got a little pattern going on and we don't so guess what she goes bye bye i'm in i'm in that shallower water so i'm going to grab this pink again um I've, I've, I've caught a couple decent fish on this so i'm going to give that a shot because we're shallow and if this doesn't work what I'm going to do is I'm going out deep and I'm fishing the jerk bait. There we go. Nice. That eighth ounce kind of died on me. I caught a decent one. Uh, my next cast, something broke me off. Uh, I threw 10 more casts, nothing was happening. So we got into kind of some, some shallow water here. And uh, so I decided to pick up that pinky, throw that around. I, th that was my 10th cast, and I finally caught one. So I, I wouldn't say that this is really a great pattern here. But um, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into that eight foot of water and throw a jerk bait. That's going to put, that's, that's what I've narrowed it down to. Fish. Nice. Not bad at all. Four pounder. Another four pounder. Pinky on the top of the lip. Look at him. Fat man. Nice. I'm out in that 10 foot range again. Throwing the jerk bait. I'm going to see. This is where I caught that five pounder. So we're going to see if, if there's a pattern here. We'll see if we can catch another fish. Um, I'm using the jerk bait so that I can cause a ruckus under the water, draw some attention. I'm confident that if there's a fish in the area, they're gonna hit this bait. It just looks too good. Um, you know, and, and smallmouth tend to be very, uh, like a dominant predator fish. If they, if they see something smaller like this in their area causing problems, they're gonna come and at least try to bully it if they're not going to eat it. 
So I, I'm just seeing what's going on here. I'm utilizing the wind, using that to my advantage and casting with the wind to try to get an extra 20 yards out of my cast, which makes a huge difference. There we go. You know, when you're fishing a jerk bait, it's very important to get away from the boat. Uh, it's crucial. So that extra, uh, you know, 20 yards makes a big difference. The other thing I'm doing is that I'm allowing, he's got one with him. So there's a couple of fish here, that's a good sign. Alright, so that's like a 4-3 right there. Nice one. I'm gonna I put it on spot lock. I'm gonna get back in there. What I'm gonna do now, I caught one on the on the jerk. So I'm gonna try to figure out what's going on with the baits. I'm gonna try the uh, quarter ounce um, swim bait and then I'm gonna try the eight and see what see if they'll hit one here. I, I do believe that there's fish. I saw he had another one with him, so let's see if we can put something. We're seeing a pattern on the deeper water. Let's see if we can get a pattern on the baits. Last cast with that eighth ounce swim jig, uh, or swim bait, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, there we go. Boy, I wanted to catch one with this thing. This is how you end the day right here. I don't care if it's a perch. I'm happy I caught one. I, boy, it's been a, it's, it's hard to figure what was better. This eighth ounce swim or the jerk bait. I think they're, they're kind of neck and neck, to be honest with you. If, if this is a pig, then I would say the swim. Ah, yeah, he's decent, man. Yeah, he's a giant. He's a giant. Uh, yep, this is a five and a half pounder. Look at him. <laughs> That's on that eighth ounce swim, man. So the swim wins it for the day. That's beautiful, beautiful. <laughs>